Hi, everyone. Um, so what I thought I would do uh, just to uh, expedite uh, the final um, reading um, is instead of giving you a reading, I'm just going to go through um, the last 20 years, I guess, because um, the, uh, uh, the reading before this got us up to 2000. Uh, so I thought it would be uh, easy just to kind of uh, do a quick glance uh, through the uh, 20 years since uh, since 2000. Um, so as you can see, um, and this this um, um, timeline only goes up to 2013, um, but you see that there is a uh, a lot of moving pieces here. You see uh, the um, uh, uh, challenge of international uh, relations and foreign policy in the United States. Um, there's also the um, push for um, or the advancement of technology um, and the um, uh, uh, tech companies, uh, you have uh, changes in, um, I would say, um, American mentalities, um, uh, challenges, facing challenges, such as the recession, and um, getting out of the recession, and um, challenges to, um, I, would, I would say, uh, as a sense of normalcy in, in the United States. Um, so one of the first big things, uh, to talk about is, um, is, uh, what happened on, uh, um, September 11th, 2001, uh, that was probably the biggest, um, event that happens, um, into the, uh, into the, um, 21st century. Um, so the September 11th attacks, they raised these big questions about, where is America in the world? Uh, there were uh, a, attempted attacks uh, during the Clinton administration and uh, uh, unsuccessfully uh, in the World Trade Center. Um, uh, at this point, though, in 2001, uh, there was a targeted um, uh, effort uh, to um, cause as much uh, mass casualty and mass damage uh, by, um, uh, by Osama bin Laden. Uh, and the um, uh, organizations that he was working with. Um, what this ended up doing, though, is um, uh, ended up um, unifying a nation that was, to a fair de degree, after the, um, uh, the election uh, of George Bush, which was a hotly contested election, um, it, it ended up unifying uh, the country. So... Um, with the after uh, the uh, the aftermath of 9/11, uh, you have George Bush who is, who effectively puts all his domestic policies to the side and targets his efforts uh, strictly on uh, defeating Al Qaeda and the Taliban. Um, Al, Al, Al Qaeda and the Taliban were these two um, uh, terrorist organizations that were. Um, uh, that essentially um, came about as a result of um, the George Bush Sr.'s efforts uh, in the Persian Gulf a decade before that, um, and uh, in the United States' um, uh, uh, push into the Middle East in the uh, 1980s and 1990s. Uh, what you end up having is the Bush Doctrine, which he which he does he he says during. Um, his State of the Union address in uh, 2002, uh, which effect effectively states that there is a war on terror uh, and that it's the, the, uh, the mission of uh, the United States to eradicate uh, terrorism across the globe. Uh, it is met with uh, overwhelming support. Um, it is supported by uh, Democrats and Republicans. Uh, not many opposed uh, what was what was going on um, because uh, a lot of people were very fearful at the time. Um, ironically enough, um, Osama bin Laden, who was uh, seen as the uh, the ringleader uh, for uh, for these events, um, was uh, actually uh, trained uh, by the United States government in one of their covert operations that had gone wrong um, several years earlier. 
Uh, now, not only does George Bush go after um, Osama bin Laden and in Afghanistan, he also believes that uh, Iraq is a massive threat uh, to the, on the world stage and that they too are on the brink of advocating towards, uh, towards terrorism. Um, so what ended up happening is um, uh, uh, General uh, Colin Powell uh, goes before uh, Congress and the United Nations uh, and declares that Iraq has uh, weapons of mass destruction. Um, he says this not actually having any evidence of it, and the evidence that they did present uh, was faulty. Um, they did not know this at the time, or they claimed to not have known this at the time, um, and it's not until a few years later that they say that they were incorrect in their assessment. Um, regardless, uh, what you have on March 19th, 2003, um, just a, a year and uh, change uh, from the attacks on September 11th is um, uh, Operation Iraqi Freedom. Uh, and um, what ends up happening is it's not a very long war. Um, but it's a, um, an attempt to uh, liberate Iraq. Uh, many argue that it was an attempt for uh, George Bush uh, Jr. Uh, to finally um, get the revenge that his father didn't get uh, when the idea that they were going to remove Saddam Hussein in, uh, in the early 1990s. Um, Saddam Hussein remained as the leader of the Iraqi people. Um, and George Bush uh, used that, the militarization uh, as an opportunity uh, to um, uh, eradicate Saddam Hussein once and for all. Um, uh, by May 2003, uh, George Bush uh, boards an aircraft carrier uh, just outside of the Persian Gulf and declares mission, uh, mission accomplished. Um, George Bush was a National Guard um, fighter pilot um, so he flew uh, the plane in himself, and it was um, to be seen as a uh, declaration of, um, uh, of victory. Um, what you also end up having as a result of 9-11 uh, is the cre creation of the U.S. Department of Homeland Security, um, which became a, and still is, a very intricate system uh, within the United States to ensure that um, uh, that the United States is protected as much as it can be. So in October 2001, just a month after 9-11, the Department of Homeland, Homeland Security is created and the Patriot Act is pushed through uh, Congress. Um, the Patriot Act is essentially um, giving the United States government allowance to, um, to listen in on uh, US citizens' uh, conversations. Um, which goes against the Constitution, um, but at that point, they had overridden it. Uh, in 2002, you have the Homeland Security Act, which, which uh, ultimately enforced the measures even further. Um, you have what, what is called rendition, uh, which is um, the CIA and other uh, UN, United States organizations uh, going abroad, uh, detaining um, anybody that they consider to be a terrorist, uh, taking him to secure uh, American locations, although they're not they're not identified as American locations, and torturing them to uh, get as much information and intel from them as possible. Um, the uh, uh, the idea is that if they um, the United States government is using those torture methods not on U.S. Uh, soil. Uh, then it's um, uh, allowed, even though it is a violation of G Geneva Conventions. Um, what the United States government, the the um, the way that the United States government prevented from uh, prevented themselves from being liable is that they did not actually take part in the torture. They had other countries, so they uh, they instructed other countries on how to torture and who to torture. Um, they also established the terrorist surveillance program, which is um, part and parcel of the uh, Homeland Security Act, um, basically creating an intricate organization to surveil what they believe to be terrorists across the globe uh, in order to protect the United States. Um, 
one such uh, rendition camp was in Guantanamo Bay, or and still is in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. Uh, and this is where they took a lot of alleged terrorists uh, to torture uh, and uh, receive, uh, acquire information from. Uh, they're considered unlawful combatants, uh, and by doing by claiming them as such, uh, they were not um, uh, protected by Geneva Conventions in the United Nations. Um, they were also unable to sue for their rights because uh, they were not on uh, U.S. soil. That's why they used uh, Guantanamo Bay in Cuba as a site to do that. Um, now, while all that is going on, uh, George Bush has his domestic policy that he tries to push forth. Um, so it, when he is first uh, elected, he begins to provide tax cuts for the wealthy, uh, which is go, goes back to Ronald Reagan and the trickle-down economics theory that if you give tax, tax cuts to the wealthy, then they are going to have lots of money and they are going to uh, share that money uh, down the chain, that they'll spend money. If you have, they have lots of money, they'll spend money. Um, it's uh, a theory that has not been successful in the um, uh, half century that it's been employed. Um, it only it only causes more income inequality uh, and more in education inequality. So you see these two things rise. Um, people um, uh, don't get people, the the lower the lower half don't get um, uh, tax benefits, um, and as a result, they uh, don't get any uh, any relief. Uh, in two thousand two, George Bush signs the No Child Left Behind program. Um, what the challenge was um, at the time was to get uh, test scores uh, up. Um, the United States uh, was falling behind, and I think I believe is still falling behind uh, in um, in math and science, um, having um, people excel in those areas. Um, so what they ended up doing is they ended up tying um, federal money, federal funding to schools, to the test scores, meaning that if your school tested, tests well and they have good test results, then they will receive more funding. Um, this creates more education inequality because uh, schools with lower funding um, have lower test scores, uh, and so it becomes more of a punishment for them. Um, and uh, rather than providing um, schools with lower test scores, more funding. Um, so you see these achievement gaps um, ultimately between white and black students uh, in the United States because uh, black students are predominantly in schools that have low test scores because they have no funding. Um, another solution to the problem was charter schools uh, where you had public schools that had that you were allowed private donations. Uh, so what a lot of um, uh, wealthier communities wanted is a public school where they could donate money. Um, and what ended up what ended up happening is that um, white students with white parents who donated money um, uh, had all the benefits, uh, while the black students in um, in lower achieving schools. Um, were um, forced to uh, live without that luxury of having uh, private donations uh, provided. Uh, so the No Child Left Behind program uh, was um, incredibly ineffective uh, and has caused, um, even to this day, um, massive inequality issues. Uh, the, the election of uh, 2004 and the insurgency that occurs during this time period is also uh, an important highlight. Uh, so what you have is Abu Ghraib, uh, Iraq, and Fallujah, which is just outside of Baghdad. Uh, you have these as detention centers uh, where uh, torture becomes rampant. Uh, photos are taken. Um, they get out um, just before the 2004 election happens, uh, and it's a very uh, bad look for the Bush administration. Um, as a result of spending so much money and so much time and effort into Iraq, they uh, don't um, uh, provide enough funding to, um, uh, to Afghanistan and finding Osama bin Laden becomes a secondary issue rather than the primary issue. 
Um, John Kerry uh, becomes the Democratic challenger. He's a former military. Um, he's a, a wealthy um, um, Democratic um, senator. And um, he doesn't resonate with the American people. Um, his, his, his wealth uh, and um, some of the uh, fabrications that he made um, as a result of his serving in Vietnam uh, come back to haunt him. Uh, Bush declares that America must stay the course and that they are still fighting a war um, and wartime presidents tend to get reelected. And as a result, Bush is reelected uh, also very narrowly. Um, his 2000 election was a narrow victory, the narrowest victory in the history of America. Um, his other uh, victory is also very narrow. Uh, his second term is riddled with domestic and foreign policy problems, which we'll see in a second. Um, so a couple of the big issues that come about in uh, Bush's uh, second term is that he wants to privatize Social Security, uh, meaning he wants um, he doesn't want the federal government to be providing Social Security. He wants um, companies to be able to do that, which means that uh, people who pay into Social Security aren't really going to be getting the money that the money back that they're putting into it. Um, there is a growing deficit in the United States. Um, George Bush, and through his military efforts, is spending uh, trillions of dollars um, a year uh, fighting uh, two wars. And as a result of that, um, the, um, the funding for uh, domestic issues uh, becomes almost non-existent. Uh, there are massive threats uh, as well to undocumented and, and illegal immigrants. Uh, no policies put in place, but a lot of efforts uh, to ensure that undocumented uh, immigrants uh, and Ill illegal immigrants are forcibly removed from the United States. Uh, on uh, August 29th, 2005, uh, a massive hurricane hits uh, Louisiana. Um, uh, her, known as Hurricane Katrina. Um, the levees and supports fail in uh, Louisiana. Uh, Louisiana is an uh, oddly um, uh, managed city uh, because it, uh, it's um, protected uh, by uh, levees and support walls to prevent uh, water from um, uh, coming into the, uh, into the region. Uh, as a result of the hurricane, uh, the levees fail. Um, the water, the water pump systems um, aren't able to manage the amount of water that comes into the city, and uh, the city is effectively flooded. Uh, there was not a warning system to provide um, adequate uh, time for that for people to get out. Uh, there was also not enough. Um, uh, economic funding for people to get out and nobody knew where to go. Uh, so as a result of poor local and federal support, uh, federal support known as FEMA, um, to respond to uh, people in need, uh, you have mass casualties. You have 1,500 uh, that die, um, some uh, very slowly, uh, slow deaths of drowning, uh, and you have thousands that are trapped without resources, some that are uh, living uh, living on the roofs of their homes, uh, some that are uh, holed up in football fields uh, without any water, without any resources. Uh, it's considered a uh, an incredible black black eye uh, on uh, in American history, where the government response was incredibly slow uh, and uh, insufficient. During that same time period. Um, and um, all of uh, Bush's presidency and even before is you have a, a, a massive problem that is brewing and nobody really pays attention to it until it's too late. Uh, so what you end up having, uh, like any recession, is you have people buying on credit, people spending money that they don't have, living beyond their means. So this happens in the 1990s and 2000s. Uh, people want to have a home. Uh, they want to have a car. Um, can't really afford to have those things, but they want them. Uh, what banks end up doing is they end up creating subprime mortgages. Subprime mortgages are really, really cheap uh, mortgage loans um, that um, people um, 
will have uh, an incredibly hard time uh, paying back. Um, so it, the, the, the mortgages uh, payments seem very low early on, but then they get uh, increasingly larger and larger as they go. Um, and people are unable to uh, keep their homes. Uh, you have collateralized debt obligations. Uh, so what banks end up doing is they end up packaging all the mortgages and then selling it off to a bigger corporation. Um, and those corporations manage that debt. Uh, some corporations don't manage the debt very well. Uh, and as a result, um, they go bankrupt. And once they go bankrupt, then the banks go bankrupt, and then they immediately ask for all their money from the uh, from the lender, and the lenders are unable to do that. Uh, you also have credit default swaps, and um, you know I don't want to go into too much uh, you know uh, economics uh, uh, for this, um, but basically it's uh, banks borrowing money from other banks. Um, and from other corporations, and um, it's just money circula circling. Uh, everybody's trying to pay each other off at the same time without the amount of money that will make everybody uh, have or be paid off at, the, at, 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 at any given time. Um, as a result of this, you know, circling money, uh, all the major banks collapse under the strain. I think there's only a few that actually survive. A lot of the major banks like the Lehman Brothers actually declare bankruptcy uh, and have to be protected by the U.S. government. So the government bails the, out the banks um, and um, um, the banks end up giving them, getting themselves back on their feet um, and uh, do not pay back their loans and um, as a result give themselves bonuses. Uh, which causes a lot of uh, uproar and anger in the uh, in the American um, population. Um, this triggers a recession um, because the banks close and people are immediately asked to return a lot of the money. Um, so if you've spent a lot of money uh, uh, on credit cards, uh, the banks immediately want that money back. And if you can't afford it, uh, then you you will you yourself will have to declare bankruptcy, uh, which so this caused a uh, a major recession. People lose jobs. People can't pay for their homes. They lose their homes. Uh, lose their homes. They lose their livelihoods, uh, and it becomes an incredibly big problem for George Bush in the end of his um, presidency. Um, um, one of the other things that uh, becomes a uh, major problem in America uh, is determining who is an American. Um, there is this massive fear that at some point uh, white America is going to become the minority um, and white America is becoming smaller. You're starting to see um, uh, minorities. Uh, so the Hispanic community, the African American community, um, um, starting to uh, have more population growth than um, than white America, um, there is an incredible backlash against this, um, even to the degree where um, Arizona bans um, the state of Arizona bans the learning of Mexican American history um, because there is this massive fear of uh, outsider influence. Um, so only American things are to be taught. Uh, and not things that reflect other cultures and other lifestyles. Uh, you also have the broadening um, of civil rights, uh, the attempt to broaden civil rights uh, during this time period. Uh, so from 1998 to 2012, you have 30 states that ban same-sex marriage. Uh, so there is a conservative movement uh, to, um, to restrict um, civil liberties. Um, 2004, Massachusetts Supreme Court rules that ban unconstitutional. I believe California also rules it unconstitutional in 2008. Um, so there is this uh, turmoil uh, in the United States about um, uh, broadening civil rights and ensuring that all people have uh, equal and equitable rights. Uh, you also have uh, the... Um, not the beginning of uh, the argument about climate change, uh, but more of an intensification 
uh, in the uh, argument against climate change. Um, in the 21st century, the Bush administration rejects the notion that climate change is an issue. Um, so they continue to deregulate um, and um, um, uh, do away with a lot of um, environmental regulations. Uh, they do not sign the Kyoto Protocol. They were one of the ones that helped write the Kyoto Protocol, but when it came to signing it, um, the Kyoto Protocol was created with Bill Clinton in office. Uh, once George Bush comes into office, he refuses to sign it, and he refuses to get um, uh, Congress to sign it. Um, the U.S. government also, during, uh, during the Bush administration, uh, pressures scientists to deliver false information to ensure that the narrative that climate change is not real uh, is intensified. Uh, ironically enough, Al Gore, who lost to George Bush, challenges Republicans and the Republican ide ideology uh, with a documentary called An Inconvenient Truth. Um, it was uh, one of the bigger films um, of, I believe, 2007. Uh, it won an Oscar and it earned uh, Al Gore the Nobel Peace Prize. So, um, uh, ultimately, uh, uh, Al Gore gets the last laugh uh, because he ends up um, advocating for climate change, which um, is one of the major challenges for the Bush administration and something that they are um, uh, uh, challenged um, to, um, uh, to find evidence to, to counter uh, near the end of, of the uh, term. Uh, 2008 election, uh, you have uh, uh, new challengers. So you have John McCain and Sarah Palin uh, versus Barack Obama and Joe Biden. Um, you have two uh, drastically different ideologies. So uh, John McCain is an old politician they have referred to as a maverick. He, he kind of um, uh, does his own thing, uh, even though he's, he's uh, solidified in the conservative base. Uh, and you have Barack Obama, who um, many uh, argue was the first digital politician. He was the first social media politician. He knew how to use uh, technology in order to send his message and get his message across. Um, as a result of uh, Barack Obama being uh, the first black uh, candidate for president, you have massive uh, black voter turnout. Um, and it uh, becomes a landslide victory. Uh, in 2008 for Barack Obama, um, partially because um, John McCain um, does not challenge Barack Obama uh, like a lot, many conservatives wished that he would, uh, and also because Sarah Palin, his running mate, was uh, um, uh, it, it was discovered later that she was an incredible liability that she did not know uh, and did not um, uh, learn uh, uh, how to uh, run uh, for the presidency. So once uh, Barack Obama becomes uh, president, his his um, agenda becomes economic and health care reforms. Uh, so he provides uh, temporary loans to auto, man auto man manufacturers like Chrysler uh, to get them back on their feet in the hopes that, um, you know, uh, revitalizing uh, businesses um, that um, that employ uh, lots of um, uh, blue collar workers uh, is going to get the economy back up and working. The other thing that he uh, uh, pushes for is the Affordable Care Act, uh, also known as Obamacare, uh, in 2010. Um, it was met with a lot of resistance uh, by conservatives, uh, but ultimately passes or, or passed um, and, uh, and uh, was challenged, uh, and the, uh, the bill is still challenged um, uh, frequently for um, um, being um, uh, considered uh, a socialist agenda. Um, as a result of these policies, there's a conservative backlash, uh, the Tea Party movement, which uh, morphs into um, the, Donald, the party of Donald Trump uh, later on. And uh, it, it uh, becomes a very powerful uh, conservative side uh, or conservative um, uh, base that uh, um, uh, unseats a lot of Democratic um, uh, politicians and uh, starts to uh, radicalize uh, the conservative movement. 
in 2012, uh, you have uh, the election between Mitt Romney and Barack Obama. Uh, Mitt Romney is considered was considered by many to be the best um, challenge for Barack Obama um, because Mitt Romney um, met every conservative category that you'd want to have, um, and uh, and um, there was no. Uh, skeletons in his closet, I guess uh, you could say. Um, now, while he was campaigning, he gave this speech uh, to a bunch of um, uh, uh, donors, uh, and he referred to the 47% of people that that would vote for Barack Obama no matter what um, uh, are only voting because Barack Obama is uh, going to um, ensure that they get their welfare checks. Um, so any, anybody who is blue collar, middle class, lower middle class, um, looked at, uh, what Mitt Romney said and took, took it as an insult. And, uh, they ended up voting the, that block majority voted for Barack Obama in the 20, 2012 election. Um, Obama's, uh, industry bailouts, um, secured key states like Michigan and Ohio, um, you have the rebuilding of uh, FEMA uh, that uh, he overtook uh, to ensure that an incident like Hurricane Katrina would never happen again. Uh, and what you end up having in, um, in uh, 2012, I believe, uh, is Hurricane Sandy in New York. Um, so it was an incredibly successful um, uh, response. Uh, and that turned the tide for a lot of people in terms of supporting uh, Barack Obama for a second term, and he wins a re-election. Uh, the second term challenges for Barack Obama was reforming education, uh, so providing Pell Grants and specialized training. Um, Pell Grants um, were, the, were um, uh, loans that um, students uh, would not have to pay back. Um, to ensure that um, that the money is being reinvested in the education system. Um, there was also this goal to have specialized training to ensure that students um, would be able to compete in the sciences. Yeah, you have the challenge of the boomerang generation. So students going off to school, um, not being able to find a job and then returning home to live with their parents. So the employment rates uh, fluctuate as a result and, um, and uh, income, uh, family income uh, lowers. Um, you have jobs that return after the, after the recession, but workers end up making less. Uh, so you see a lot of people may, working two or three jobs just to actually make uh, what they uh, would have made 10 years before uh, in one job. Uh, there's lots of conservative backlash regarding same-sex marriage. Um, a lot of setbacks. Um, so there's some progress made during the Obama administration for same-sex marriage, um, but that is challenged uh, in many states uh, and, uh, and is pushed back. Uh, the Department of Education uh, was refusing to withhold uh, money as punishment uh, for having LGBTQ plus students. Um, which is not something that um, that the Bush uh, administration would do uh, or, or had done. Um, so under the uh, Obama administration, they actually uh, did away with the idea of withholding money uh, for um, students um, that um, uh, that the government, the Bush government saw as problematic. Um, one of the big things uh, that happens um, uh, throughout uh, the 21st century, uh, going all the way back to 1999 with the Columbine shootings, uh, is the issue of gun violence. Gun violence becomes a, uh, an increasing uh, issue in the United States. You have mass, mass and school shootings. Uh, the biggest and most memorable one is uh, Sandy Hook Elementary School in 2012, where you have 20 uh, six and seven year old um, uh, children killed. Um, I believe six teachers were killed. Um, and um, it was it's, it's very um, uh, emblematic of the many school shootings uh, that have occurred in the United States over the last 20 years. Uh, you also have the Boston Marathon bombing. Um, 
on April 15th in 2013. Um, one of the big uh, uh, takeaways uh, from that going almost, almost going back to the Oklahoma City bombing is that uh, terrorism uh, is um, uh, is a domestic issue, is a foreign issue. Uh, uh, it's something that uh, that always needs to be uh, uh, on alert uh, in the United States. Um, at the same time that uh, all that's going on, um, you have these um, advancements into Iraq and Afghanistan where you actually see few results. Uh, there's not many positive results. There, there are, I believe, uh, 6,000 deaths, um, uh, soldier deaths, American soldiers that die uh, during this time period um, uh, of the Obama administration. Um, lots of casualties. And um, as a result of uh, the American president uh, presence in Iraq and Afghanistan, uh, you see uh, the rise of ISIS, so radical Islamists uh, that emerge in 2014 and um, uh, remain in, in that region uh, for, uh, for four or five years. Uh, and still to this day, uh, you see them there. Um, as a result of uh, Barack Obama's um, uh, success, uh, you see uh, a backlash. Um, so you have um, the uh, election between Hillary Clinton and George, or sorry, Donald Trump in 2016. Uh, Hillary Clinton um, being the Secretary of State for Barack Obama um, was involved in some political scandals, uh, which end up tarnishing her, uh, her image. Um, and as a result of her husband's uh, policies uh, Bill Clinton's policies in the 1990s, uh, the, uh, a lot of African Americans uh, refused to, uh, to vote for her. Um, so in 2016, you have a large uh, African American contingent that don't vote at all because uh, they won't vote for Trump and they won't vote for Hillary Clinton. Uh, and that's uh, one of the reasons why Donald Trump uh, becomes president, uh, because it becomes a largely uh, white American voting block uh, that occurs. Um, as a result, uh, and we've seen this over the last four years, and we don't have enough time to get into it in this course, unfortunately, uh, is you see America's return to uh, white supremacy. Um, it's a, um, uh, a an absolute uh, consequence of having a first uh, black president uh, where you see um, uh, an individual like Donald Trump come in and take advantage of the uh, the fear um, of in, in America, especially with conservative Americans, that um, their country is being lost. Um, that pretty much gets us to um, uh, as close as we can uh, to present day. Um, um, I wouldn't be able to nearly get. Uh, I'd have to do another 30 slides to be able to get through uh, the Trump administration. So I figure we'll leave it at um, the election of 2016. Okay. Um, thanks for listening. And I hope you uh, hope you stuck around.